No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world, and today we're going to find out about one of the most uh, difficult to avoid characters on all of the Instagram comedy landscape. What's going on, Jacob? How are you doing? How are you doing? Uh, thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, man. I'm excited to uh, have you in here. It's like, you're one of those dudes who a lot of people, if I were to just use your name, they'd be like, who? And then if you were to say the motherfucking cop on exactly. Instagram, they'd be like, exactly. right, right, right. Yeah. It's been quite a ride, honestly. Instagram has like, changed the game, especially as an actor, entertainer. Mm -hmm. um, it's opened doors for me like tremendously, and now I'm here in LA living my best life, and making content and just killing the game yeah how'd you uh, get into this instagram line of work or especially uh I mean, we can get into a little bit more of your uh, history and where you're coming from and everything mm -hmm. but wh where did this particular explosion uh, come from um well i guess it's a start all the way back is like i, I used to be a social worker actually I, I was a counselor i got my master's in social work i was doing micro counseling so i was like mentally ill and chemically addicted population can you guys adjust so, the camera so um I was doing that for a while and then like I got laid off and then I started doing creative stuff and then I did a comedy rap video called I'm a Jew that went like set at Barstool Sports had picked it up at the time in 2011 uh -huh. and that sort of put me on the path like oh maybe I have a future in entertainment so I became an actor doing TV film stuff you know a year, year, few years training you know for like five years and then 2017 was the breakout year when I made a video uh, of uh as Trump doing bad and bougie and also as soldier, the soldier boy thing. Remember when he was like, you know, someone's got to check in though. I did that as Trump. Right. So that was my moment where I got into the Instagram scene and that's when I had everyone's attention and I sort of capitalized on that and just started killing it. When did you, so, okay. But preceding that you were just, you're just a kid from the Bronx. Yeah. Just a kid from the Bronx, you know, growing up there. Um, 34 now, and it's been a really wild ride, but it's really exciting Younger to see where my me. career's been going, you know? Younger than me. I don't know if they're going to pick up on that. <laughs> well, everyone always thinks I'm really old. That's like the number one troll comment. It's like, what is this 50-year-old guy doing Instagram videos for? You know? Right. I love it, though. I love trolls. You, you know? pull off the, the adult cop security guard look very well. Did anyone mm -hmm. tell you that before you uh, got into this? Was there anybody who ever like, said to you, like, hey, <laughs> you, you, just, you, you look like a cop? Well, I kind of fell into it because when I joined the Actors Union back in 2012, uh, one of the ways people told me to make a good living is you get, if you get a uniform, an NYPD cop uniform, you could work as an extra. Mm. And, you know, you make thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year working three, four days a week. Really? So like I was doing law that. Law and order and shit? Yeah, I was on law and order for several seasons. You'll see me, like, just in the background, like, you know, handing some files or being feet, you know, talking to us, bringing a suspect around, whatever. Right. Um... And then just got it just transitioned out of that into bigger things. Yeah, you were like, well, as long as I got this fucking cop uniform, then I might as well just make some fucking content. Yeah, just so I had the uniform and I just started doing a little content. And then the really big moment was the for the pussy challenge, where I did this freestyle rap in twenty like later <clears throat> in twenty seventeen, and that was like a huge video that hundreds of millions of views that you, changed my life. You were video. coming up with these ideas yourself in terms of like, oh, like these are things that'll go viral. I need to do something Trump related. You were producing all this content on your own? Yeah, absolutely. I'm always like the main creative. I, I love producing, writing, directing, you know, um, I have a big hand in the creative of it. When I made the Trump ones, it was like right after he had won the election and everyone was really upset. The internet was very dark place at that time. And I was like, you know what? Like, let me do some people need to laugh. So like, let me do a video, like, you know, making fun of Trump. And then the Soldier Boy thing just and it really spoke to the people. And then I just sort of took it from there. And once I had some juice, I started reaching out to other influencers I wanted to work with. Like the first two people I reached out to was uh, Ken Stars and Fatboy SSC. Okay. And I was just like, hey, I'm Jake. You know, you might see my videos. I have a copy uniform. I'd love to shoot with you. Fatboy SSC, like kind of like the king of the East Coast <laughs> Instagram comedian shit. Yeah, he definitely has put his mark on the map. Supreme Patty running Florida. Yeah. Approximately, maybe yeah. Hollywood too. Maybe you could even throw Bunk in that category. You know, he's one of the dudes who blew up the biggest out of that whole region. And he everything. doesn't go by Bunk anymore, though, right? John Gabbana. John Gabbana. Is yeah. he out? Yeah, I think he's out. There. He's he's not making content like that. You oh. know, obviously he's not. You know, the same Bunk gang. Yeah, there. that totally was different. That was a wild time. I, 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 I sometimes <laughs> when I look back on that, I just wish that he had stayed the course because all he had to do was just keep stealing shit or pretending to steal shit. And I mean. People like that. They like that simple idea. That's one thing that I notice when it comes to the Instagram comedy idea is that they like it when you could boil, distill your personality down into like a very simple idea and then just run yeah. with that. Well, he was just self-destructive, obviously. He started getting his dick sucked on his story, posting it. And, you know, right. <laughs> like he was obviously just on the road. So he couldn't take the, 
the the glory and the fame and stuff like that because that's a lot to take in like once you become like insta famous it's a very it's a very real thing it's surreal because it's like it's something that wouldn't have existed like 20 years ago like if this didn't exist i'd just be a normal humdrum character actor getting my little tv roles here and there no one would know who i am but now from the instagram like i go on the street and people stop me all the time and like you know who i am and it's, it's surreal it's like an a-list attention yeah that's weird because everybody's on fucking instagram well the young kids and stuff are on instagram yeah, yeah the, eight, the 18 to 35 you know right it's weird kind of like you know sometimes when you think about like really famous people i was, I was watching ellen for some reason the other yeah. day and i was just thinking <laughs> i'm like fucking ellen is so famous like I, I feel like all these rappers all these like social media celebrities are so famous but then you got ellen and she's on a different level but the reality is if you go get a tv show for yeah. the most part like unless you're on Unless you're one of the biggest stars on one of the biggest shows, being on TV is really not that big a deal. Like, if mm -hmm. you, you could go get a TV show and it's going to be on some shitty ass <laughs> network and it's going to be on for three years and yeah. nobody's going to fucking know about well, it. Well, it's all about, you know, also movies and stuff like that. Like, for me personally, like, my goal is just be a regularly working actor, hopefully someday win awards and stuff like that, and just leave my legacy behind of someone who's able to make content that, like, affected people and like maybe brought a smile to their face through the course of their tough day or whatever maybe or made them feel something you know that's mm. what i'm all about really yeah was there um so you you already had like the actor dream and then were, were you would you consider yourself sort of frustrated with that dream when you went on to try out the the instagram stuff uh no because it, it kind of just i i mean i had an instagram but i wasn't making any content for instagram prior to the trump videos that i had made mm. But once I got into that, I just started making content, making these, you know, short little videos. And I just kept having success and World Star repost, you know, shouts to World Star Hip Hop. They've been tremendous help in, uh, grow in helping me grow and helping my career as well. And just moving it uh, forward and just killing it. Yeah. yeah. So what, what, what's it like when you go do a video with somebody like on an average? Is it typically I mean, or what's an, av an average day like for you? You're just going yeah. out and just sort of like when you meet up with one of these people, like what, what's the thought process like? Well, you know, I'm uh, like now that I have a bigger following and, like, you know, I'm blue check verify, which is like, you know, a big deal in the Instagram community to be having that blue check. It's so silly when you describe yourself someone who doesn't understand social media. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I got this check mark. Like it makes it like. Well, it's a big deal because you're not going to get deleted. Well, I, well, that's a, that's one thing, but that's also like it gives you power. Like I think the algorithm favors you when you have a blue yeah. check and stuff, and people just respect the check because like, oh, this, this person is somebody, you know? They don't right. just give those out. Yeah, and it kind of changes the whole commenting game because all of a sudden dropping comments actually does something because you tend to get highlighted up at the top. Exactly. Yeah, that's definitely a good way to gain right there. You know, the crazy shit is that Drake, you can only comment on Drake's shit if he follows you. Oh really? So it's like a very exclusive club gathering. So you're in that, yeah, I'm just and barely you're in, that, you're in that club now. Right? But I don't want to get unfollowed by dropping ignorant ass comments. So, so, I, okay. so you're select like you drop like one a week, like or one. Like, if I, I feel know, like I have know. a comment that is appropriate for yeah. the situation, then I'll drop it. But it's also <laughs> weird too because you'll drop a comment on Drake's Instagram and you'll see yeah. four thousand likes, yeah. no no responses. Yeah, you never see that. Yeah. You, you never see someone comment and then not get a bunch of responses under their comment. There's only like a dozen comments probably or something. Right? Yeah, and, and nobody can respond to your comment unless yeah. they Drake follows them. It's just a weird, <laughs> weird thing. You know, it's like you know, Yeah. You know, you know you obviously you understand the power of the Instagram comments. So. Oh yeah, big time. You know you ever see uh how Dennis Rodman's been going viral with it because he has oh, it set yeah. up to, to drop a non comment on everybody's shit. It's like a it just looks like he's commenting nothing. <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. That's hilarious. That's though. a weird one. I don't know who put him on that. I'm sure it's not him. I'm sure it's somebody on his team. It's hilarious. But uh, yeah, to finish answering your question as far as uh, when I get together with people, oh, like, yeah, you know, yeah. usually I have an idea, um, you know, we come together. I don't really like write out scripts a lot of the time. I kind of have a sense of like, because th usually in comedy there's three beats, so you just want to kind of know how like the setup, the middle, and the end, like the punch, mm -hmm. like the hook. So as long as like we come together and we figure that out, we kind of add a little bit, we feel it out, I see how the shots work. Boom, shoot it usually, you know, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. so I'm using my phone on most of my content, like it shoots in 4K, you don't need like a fancy camera to make like what you want to do creatively like mm -hmm. it's never been a better time as an entertainer as an actor to because of the technology we have out so easy to shoot mm. yeah it's crazy how like people get bigger and bigger in the instagram comedy space and yeah. then that's one thing that just stays consistent is that everybody just keeps filming shit on their phones so this is like and, and there's like a rawness to it that i think if you were to film something with like a really nice camera that people would be less yeah. drawn to it well that's the funny thing is that honestly like high pr production value content doesn't do as well on Instagram because people prefer that organic look. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, my biggest videos have been ones that look kind of real. 
those are always like those short, especially those short, quick ones, you know? Mm -hmm. Like people don't have the patience for long form content, but obviously I, I need to begin to make more long form content mm. as I evolve and get onto bigger platforms and Have such. you tried to do the YouTube thing at all? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I'm trying to monetize that right now and everything, get that together. Mm. But I kind of made a conscious effort decision early on that I was going to go get my bag from just building my brand on Instagram and I would get mm. brand deals and hostings and, re, you know, just that, those kind of things. That's where I made that decision to do that instead. So, so take me through what it's like to get a bag off Instagram for somebody <laughs> in your position. Like, how do you monetize and how, how good is it? Yeah, well, it's, I mean, as, as long as you have a nice following, you're going to be able to charge, like, accordingly, especially if you're hot, you know. So when I get working with big-name people, that me, you know, means I can charge accordingly. Mm -hmm. So basically a lot of brands reach out to me or I'll reach out to them. And I'll, you know, I'll pitch a concept and, you know, if we agree upon the price, then we just go ahead. They send me a deposit and we're not going to, I'm not going to ask you how much you get, but yeah. like, okay, I have 1.5 million yeah. followers. How much do you think I could get from a story post? Like what, what do you think is a fair rate for me? I, I get about a hundred, 120,000 views for the story. I would say at least, at least a thousand, 1500 for a story. Okay. That's what I would say. Yeah. You know, so we're not solid. Uh, Somewhere in that vicinity. Yeah. But, like, if you had, like, something on your page, I would say, like, at least, like, 15,000. Because the, the, what people say is, like, every 100,000 is supposed to equal 1,000 uh -huh. in, like, marketing terms. Like, you okay. know, because I've been meeting a lot of brand managers and marketing people and stuff like that. Those kind of people that get tied into when you're making content for these brands. Uh -huh. But overall, it's been a great market, especially because there's a lot of, like, things that can't go traditional market as far as advertising, you know, like cannabis or... Mm alcohol or whatever maybe you can do it on social media so. what are the kind of brands that you typically end up doing the most work with um i mean definitely a lot of rappers because obviously they see i have a big part in the hip-hop culture and oh everything. so smaller rappers will hit you up and they, yeah. what is the typical pitch from them uh they just be like you know check out my work you know what are your rates mm -hmm. and I just break it down to them as far as like what it costs to like say they have the song in the video but it's not about the song and then a skit where the, the skit is actually about you the artist or you're in the skit so mm -hmm. those, those are two different rates and uh yeah they just agree upon it and i've had good success at some of the videos i've done for artists have been reposted mm -hmm. by big pages oh yeah you know that's I, the the hook is to be like shit world star might post it but yeah and i make and i think i make a good intelligent piece of content you know because there's a lot of different type of instagram personalities but i'm I'm not the type, you know, to just go crazy, like jumping around, doing whatever. Like I'm making like a lot of times produced content, like there's mm -hmm. effort into it. Yeah. See, that's the weird thing is that when you look at the sort of, you know, YouTube or Instagram comedy landscape, it's sort of like there's a lot of young kids. Like young people seem like the ones who are doing it. Us being guys in our mid thirties, it's yeah. a little bit like shit. Sometimes you, you see the level of energy that people are coming with on Instagram and you're like, fuck, <laughs> I don't know that I necessarily have that or at least not for too long. Well, you just gotta be able to evolve and adapt to the situation. Like, you know, you have no choice. Like, cause there's a lot of actors who just don't know how to get hip to the Instagram thing. Like, and I don't get it. Cause you could, anyone can do it. Like you just gotta be creative and have that hustler ambition to mm. make it happen. You think that they have this like sort of fantasy idea that they're just going to have this, uh, this amazing traditional Hollywood career where they're going to just get put on some show and everything's going to be great. They won't have to try. Cause that's kind of the, the ultimate dream. When you look at a lot of like top actors, they right. almost do no press. You almost never get to see their actual personality. They right. just straight up like fall back and they just let that be their thing. Like life must be kind of easy when all you have to do is actually just go and, film your show yeah absolutely but like when you put yourself in a position like yours where you're sort of accepting smaller amounts of money yeah. from people and such i mean it's like opening up a very different uh way of life that a lot of people maybe wouldn't be able to handle yeah i mean it's what the best thing is for me it's like maybe it's so i don't really sweat it that much if i'm not getting an audition for say a major tv show or film or i'm not booking something because I'm, I'm making better living than 95 percent of actors actors out there because of what i do on social media so it supplements that and it's also a situation where one hand really washes the other like when i had booked a role on the show power uh, when I got to set, the director was like, "Oh, I loved your, I love your content on so and so's page," you know. Mm. So like, obviously that, like, obviously I knew the casting director knew me. I booked with her before and everything, but obviously the having uh, being recognized helped me get that role. Familiarity so. goes a long way. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've done a lot of stuff with like Fifty Cent and his old production company. What's he like? 
Uh, he seems like a cool dude. You know, we shot a bunch of uh, promo uh, uh, commercials for his show, Fifty Central, like a, two years ago, year and a half ago. Okay. And it was just, it was just like a real honor because I grew up listening to Fifty Cent. You know, like Same. you know, G Unit mixtapes and like all that. Like you know, that's it's it was surreal. There's been a lot of like really amazing, like validating, surreal moments in my career so far that have just like made me know that like I'm on the right path and I'm doing the right thing and I know I'm just gonna keep killing it as long as I just stay. Like, keep that momentum and don't give up. You ever have any sketchy situations where you're going to meet up with some <laughs> random-ass rapper that DM'd you, and then all of a sudden you find yourself on the projects or something? Well, one time I def- I went to do a music video shoot in the Bamas that's, like, deep in Brooklyn, like, super, it's, like, East New York, close, like, really far. I, yeah, and, I, uh, I've written, written BMX in East New York. <laughs> and it's definitely not yeah. the kind of environment you would yeah, want so to go to. Yeah, so we were shooting a video where, like, basically, like, I was grabbing the guy. We were shooting in the hallway of the projects. Like, we had no, like, permit or anything like that. Like, I felt, like, mad sus. So I was like, let's just get this done. And like I'm gonna get, the, get my money and get the fuck out of here, like mm. you know. So that was definitely like a, a situation. But usually I'm pretty good at like feeling out stuff. You know, I got a really good sixth sense and like. You, you know. ever have anybody try to play with the money afterwards? Um, I've been pretty good so far. No one's really played game. Everyone's been satisfied. Customer, as far as what I've done, right? You know, I'm usually able to like weasel people out who aren't real and such. Mm. But so far, I haven't had any issues. Like it's been great. You don't get the deposit beforehand. Yeah, I get the deposit. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, always, always. That's yeah. a good idea. Yeah, like if, if it's something like they're paying me to repost something, then they're gonna pay me the full amount before I repost it. Right. But if it's like a sketch, they're gonna pay me the deposit of half, and then they're gonna pay me the other part when I have the sketch ready to post. Like you know, within seven days or so. You never had any issues with like impersonating a police officer because I've seen <laughs> that somebody uh, got busted for making a yeah. YouTube video giving out uh, t- parking tickets yeah, people recently. people be wild. And honestly, people don't understand like, because that's the thing. I don't really just go around doing it willy-nilly. Like a lot of my stuff where I play the cop character, it's very well thought out. I try and be as safe as possible. Like I'm, I don't try and play like that. Like trying to impersonate some, like really like messing with people on some prank shit. Like I would never do that. Right. Overall, cops love what I do. Like back in New York, I get so much love from the NYPD. I, bet. I actually recently spoke to a. Uh, because I posted that video. You seen that video of the NYPD cop on the bike, and he and he, oh, and he fell and busted God, his head. Yes. So I posted that, and then uh, a local police department's Instagram like hit me up, and like and we're gonna, I'm gonna possibly do a, ske- a sketch like at their department. Like I'm gonna send them some concepts, and they're gonna see if command will sign off on it. That would so, be so cool if you were like the. Uh, remember how they had the McGruff, the crime yeah, dog? Yeah. You could be like that. Like but, make people like the cops more by you sort of yeah, representing but, them. But seriously, because cops back in New York would come up to me like, yeah, like kids will come up to us and be like yo is this officer burger is he with you guys is he the real cop like you know wow so i think what i think i do what a good job is like i kind of like walk the balance and i like i'm able to like hold police accountable for some of the like bad things they do but also i humanize the badge as well like with the content i bring you know that show that it's a real it's gray it's not always black and white and stuff you know yeah it's weird because it's like so many people in the hip-hop space they their op- opinion is you're just supposed to hate every cop blah yeah. blah, blah and i'll even be talking about yeah. like yeah a cop came by and was yeah. like talking to us about this and that in the shop blah blah yeah. blah and they will act like yeah. i just committed some <laughs> serious crime by acknowledging <laughs> that i had a friendly conversation with a yeah. cop and i'm yeah. like yeah. i mean from my perspective I think yeah. the LA police officers are um, alarmingly mm-hmm. nice and friendly. Now, mm-hmm. granted, I exist in a different space yeah, because I'm a we're, fucking we're, business we're, owner. And, and, and we're white. And, and, and I'm white, white right? Yeah. I feel yeah. you. But I mean, I'm just saying, I see cops deal with a lot of sketchy shit around this yeah. block all the time. And I've never yeah. seen the cops around here, at least through my experience, I've never seen yeah. them really cross the line. Yeah, but they, they've really like embraced like my content. Like, I don't really get any negative reviews for the stuff I do. Like, a lot of times you get mostly compliments from it. Yeah, I mean, if you were just like, <laughs> prancing around in the suit just walking on the street that yeah could be like thing. but like sometimes i'll get people if they want me to do some shit and i'm like nah i'm not doing that like you know I they want you to that. run around downtown yeah like some shit around with a gun yeah with a gun out like on broadway like first like you know, i'm like no i'm not you, doing you that. don't have like a prop gun that you bring around with you yeah i got a little like like little prop one that i have and stuff you know okay. so but I, most of the time if i use it it's like I, I try to do those scenes like inside something controlled so i know like nothing bad will happen or people will bug out but people do bug out sometimes when we shoot stuff because they like, think it's real because mm. I, I play it I play it well like you know I'm like <laughs> you know like don't move you know you know whatever so yeah definitely who have you uh, met through this whole uh, career path that has been exciting for you you mentioned Fifty Cent already but you were mentioning uh, yeah Fifty Cent ba- was Bad exciting Baby Kodak earlier oh yeah the first week I moved to L A um, this is uh, I ended up working because I basically when I was in Miami I did the remember when that clip first came out of Kodak in the studio it was like the mm. do, 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 yeah. like that short little clip I was like that's gonna be a thing so me and little Terrio did a video 
and that like got the attention of his team. And then when I moved to LA, Terry was here too, and he did another video. And then his DJ reached out to me. And then like one day before I was going up to the farm to work, he just called me and was like, "Yeah, come to the studio tonight." And we just shot the skit, and it was amazing. Like to be, <laughs> I was just like, "This is surreal." Like I'm in LA, and I'm chilling out with Kodak Black, and you had never been, been, have you ever been around uh, like rapper well you said the 50 cent thing but was this yeah. like kind of a new experience being in that environment um no i mean i chill with other rappers before like i did stuff with styles p i'm actually like on his last album like i did a little audio skit and really stuff. yeah so like that was like that was real because i come from the bronx so like i'm right next to yonkers and everything i listen to that's crazy because the first music video i was yeah. ever in was styles p back in like 2007 what? Yeah. Yeah. Style, fire, we're, we're basically fire, in the locks fire, fire. <laughs> we're in the locks i agree we're the bagel and locks you no. know? Exactly, you know? yeah, yeah i've yeah. always been waiting no i think there's definitely there's there's rappers who've made that punch yeah. like something about locks and yeah. the locks and bagels and such and such yeah yeah and then just like people i've met working in my tv and film career like i got to work on a woody allen film called uh, wonder wheel like a year and a half ago and i got to do a scene with kate winslet mm. so i was like a big deal i'm like wow i did a whole scene with kate winslet like you know i watched her in titanic growing up like you know it was just a really rewarding experience was she uh was she cool or was she yeah she was weird? cool as shit like we we what was great about it was that it was just supposed to be a really quick scene it was like an eighth of a page like i she said a line i said a line but on the day like she wanted to do this ad lib so we did this like we ad lib the scene at, and i got all this extra dialogue and woody's like yeah i love it like let's keep it wow and we shot it so i ended up having more dialogue and then at the end we were like she was, I was like, oh, thank you so much for such an honor. Like, you know, it's my first, you know, whatever, first big film. Uh -huh. And she's like, oh, give everyone, give Jake a big round of applause. I was like, kind of like everyone clapping. I was like, oh, I feel like I'm king of the world. And, <laughs> and she was like, ah, don't ruin it. Like, you know. <laughs> That's so really that, what she said? That, yeah, so that was, that was funny. That was, like she's probably had a hundred yeah. people try to bust that joke out on yeah. her before. Yeah, I mean, it was it was too much of an alley -oop for me not to do it. Like I would have regretted it if I hadn't said it. So that like, <sighs> that was a really cool experience, like meeting her and working with her. That's such a weird experience when you're around a famous person and you kind of, you know, you have stuff that you want to say to them, but then like, it's, like for me, like then I start thinking like, yeah. oh yeah, they've heard that a lot. Like they, yeah. like you know, I interviewed ICP. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask them about Tila Tequila yeah. and how they, how she got chased off the stage. Yeah. And I thought I had a pretty like interesting question to ask there. And as yeah. soon as I started asking it, uh, I believe Shaggy Two Dub was just yeah. like, oh. This yeah. shit, like he's like, and you just yeah. realize, like, oh yeah, these are the things that people ask them over and over and over. Yeah, yeah. no, it's uh, it's probably what most of this interview's been like for you, like just answering questions you already answered five million times. No, I, I love answering questions and talking about my life. It's the best thing ever. You do. <laughs> See, that's a weird thing that for me is that like people always will come up to me and ask me like some basic ass shit that I already answered five thousand times, yeah. and I'm just like, Ugh. like, well, you know what it is? I think, and you, like, I think there's like levels of fame and stuff like that, and it's funny with me because like now I'm at a point where I have some fame, but I'm not like. I'm not like eight, so like, like I know what it's like. To, I, so I know it's like to be approached like people, like you know, where you're like, oh, I don't want to talk, you know, whatever. I don't want to talk to this person, maybe or whatever. Right. And but at the same, at the same token, like I'm trying to get up with someone who maybe has more bigger, more juice than me, and you mm -hmm. know. So it's fine to work it from both perspectives, where like you know. You like there's people you dub, but then there's people who dub you. You know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I've been trying to wrap my head around a while. What are uh, my head around? What kind of potential skit we might end up doing? Like we, you know, we well, have I brought a store. my cop uniform. I right. brought my cop uniform. We yeah. have a store. We have an actual security guard. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly what we could do, but I mean, it could be you coming in and telling me that you want to be my new security guard and trying to tell this security guard to get the fuck out of here. I don't know what his personality. I don't know if he's like a funny guy. Yeah. If he would even want to be part of this, but yeah. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out after the interview. Definitely. Just sort of like shoot ideas yeah, out we'll just, there. We'll, yeah, we'll just shoot the shit, you know. I, fig mm. I figure out my content pretty quickly, you know. Well, one cool part about yeah. you that I realized since you got here is yeah. that you get high as fuck because yeah. you gave me this pre-roll joint from Supreme Green yes, out of Humboldt yeah. County. Yes, Supreme Tell me about Green. this. Supreme Green, it's a new pre-roll joint brand. Uh, we have a farm up in Humboldt County, and we're going to be just – we're fully white label licensed and everything, and we're just going to be getting all the way out, all the way to California, everywhere. Mm. And, you know, we're going to be hitting the road soon, just getting to the dispensaries and very excited. It's a different kind of joint product. We take it's, we were trying to change the people's perceptions of pre-rolls, you know, because a lot – historically, pre-roll has, like, trim and, like, just it's usually mm. trash. Like, we use a different farming style called modern natural farming where we give the plants uh, fermented fruit juices and locally sourced ingredients, no man-made chemicals, pesticides. Wow. So it's 100% vegan, 100%, you know, 
I got a weed strain coming out. I wish I could say all that shit about it. I don't know shit about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got to have my points ready, you know, to tell, tell people. No, yeah. definitely. I mean, it does look like gas in there. It's like sometimes people will give me these pre roll blunts yeah. or whatever. Not Bear Woods. Shut up, yeah. Bear Woods. They're great. But uh, sometimes people will give me other blunt products. Yeah. And for me, it's like. I don't necessarily want to smoke this big weird thing with all this crazy shit. So I'll yeah. break it open and just put it in a blunt. But when I break it open, I realize like, holy fuck, it's they trash. really put some trash it's in this trash thing. weed. Yeah, no, we we tr- I was there on the farm. Like I've been part of this from the beginning. Like I was there like to trim the plants and trim all the buds, and you know it's been a real passion. And it's really great to see it finally taking off. We had our launch party last week. It was really awesome. Uh, and we really think we're going to really just kill it, become one of those big brand names, you know, in the industry. Definitely. You were, you were growing up in the Bronx smoking nickel bags sitting on the <laughs> of corner? Course, I, I remember smoking dime bags where you could get, like, four blunts out of them shits. No, yeah. Like, it was just that Jamaican, like, yard weed or, like, just that Mexican brick weed. Like, it was just disgusting. That, Ugh. The Mongo Pina or whatever the yeah. hell. Like, I remember at the skate park that I would, I would yeah. it was normal and this is even in like 2006, 2007, that yeah. it was like normal for us to just buy like $5 sacks of weed. And I mean, mm-hmm. I was never the one rolling it at that time. So I don't right. actually know like how Philly, they made that like stretch. Owl. It was definitely a white owl for white sure. Owl, white yeah. Owls, yeah. Cause then, and that's weird too. Cause then all of a sudden you're spending a dollar for the blunt wrap. Like you're telling me that the blunt wrap is what is 20% of the cost of the weed that you're putting inside the blunt wrap. Yeah. I mean, that's not, that's not a good idea. Yeah, it was definitely, like, it's crazy. People nowadays are spoiled growing up with, like, just this bomb-ass weed that they got. Hell, yeah. They have to smoke the headache weed that we had to smoke growing up. You know what? I had a funny experience the other day where I was interviewing <laughs> Kush Poppy. And oh, yeah, it's the homie, Joseph, good friend of mine. Good dude who you would assume probably smokes a good amount of weed based yeah. on being named Kush Poppy. But yeah. then I, I fucking sparked one of these pre-roll Bearwoods, yeah. and he got a little too high. I'm going to be yeah, honest with you. he gets goofy. I'll, like, he, he, he do be smoking, but he gets goofy. Like, you know, yeah. that's why anytime we shot, I was like, look, we're shooting the skits first before we do, <laughs> or do anything. You know? He couldn't stand up by the yeah. end of it. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> Like afterwards, he went and tried to play. We have like a video game uh, console, and he seemed like like I, I didn't see it, but one of my employees told me that he was having a hard time standing up trying to play Pac Man. So that was, that was a lot. Oh, high. Joseph! Even back in the yeah. day, like three years ago, I had Wi-Fi's funeral on the podcast, and I, yeah. I, I for a while I didn't want to say that it was him, but yeah. then he brought it up on the podcast the other day. But he fucking smoked a blunt and got so high that he kind of passed out during yeah. it, and he fell asleep. Yeah, some people can't hang, and so uh, he does get like that when he smokes. I'm sure he gets. I'm sure he doesn't. I'm sure he gets higher now and he's used to it. But, you know, yeah. and a lot of times people come from... California from, is different, though. The cannabis is way stronger out exactly. here in California compared to other places that they might be. You know, he's from the Midwest, so... I remember that after years and years and years of smoking New York weed, I remember when I came out to California and I was on this, uh, this like, you know, week and a half long road trip or in this yeah. giant RV. And the whole deal is that I'm supposed to be like talking to the camera while I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. And we're smoking like 10 blunts yeah. a day. It's yeah. my first time off of the real, real Cali weed. Yeah. And I was getting fucking obliterated yeah. and being so like introverted and wasn't talking to the yeah. camera. Yeah. I'm like freaking out in my head and yeah. stuff. Like, I don't know what I'm going to say. It's yeah. actually weird. I haven't felt like that yeah. from weed in so long. Well, one of my biggest surprises when we were out here is realizing how silly we are back east for loving sour diesel, like how California. <laughs> Like they like those fucking heathens back in New York. Like give them the sour diesel they want. Like we'll keep yeah. the gelato and the cookies right. you know, and the OGs and like all that stuff. You know, so it must be weird for you to even yeah. be able to be in the business of legally like developing yeah, weed it's, it's products. Pretty, it's pretty surreal knowing the government like knows that we're like and the, cannabis. If you were you to know? take this back to New York, all of a sudden you got a problem. Yeah, exactly. But from every from what, everything that I hear, like cannabis is probably gonna be federally legal within like the decade like you yeah. know probably sooner like it's from everything i'm hearing from people like especially as it gets legalized on all the coast it just starts to shrink in and just mm. take over it'll just seem more and more apparent that they can't continue to to live this way yeah but they gotta do something about the taxes though because that's what's killing us there's still a huge black market here in california mm. as far as cannabis goes because like white labels you're getting 35 percent tax like as the customer so yeah a lot of customers are, i just go to a place that's doing it you know under yeah. the table no my, my guy who worked for me was telling me that he went to this fucking weed shop around here and spent 80 dollars on an eighth yeah that's crazy i'm like that's not gonna work for me because yeah, we put more work. than an eighth in a blunt and i'm not really trying to smoke an 80 dollar <laughs> blunt yeah that's that's Get taken advantage of. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I wonder sometimes about like those the legal shops and all those brands and stuff and how they're going to be doing. Although I also am probably going to be in the position where I'm pushing legal at right. like you know clinic weed. It's got to come to some middle ground because then you look at a state like Oregon where they're overrun with product and it's so cheap because like the tax whatever I don't know what's going on in that situation, but 
Hopefully there's some middle ground we can find or bring down, at least make it like realistic, the taxes for a few years, you know, just so it has time because that money should hopefully go down to enforcing, closing down the mm. black market uh, dispensaries and such. No, yeah, and it's fucking crazy just how like the, the, the big fucking companies are coming in and sort of like usurping the whole weed scene, like just trying to swallow up all this business. And it's Oh, like, yeah, the, for, the big, big business is in Humboldt County. They know what's going on. They're investing millions and millions of dollars like they they like if they're making that bet that's why like i'm I'm certain that it's going to be federal because if the big business is investing hundreds of millions mm-hmm. of dollars into this already like you know they're gonna they're not doing that unless they feel it's a certain i thing. just saw walmart is carrying cbd really cbd products walgreens too i believe like all, all cbd is great my mom yeah. taking cbd you now like you know it, it, it honestly feels like taking xanax without having to take xanax you like, really feel me. that way about it yeah it makes me feel it gives me that same relaxed feeling i gotta like, do you know, more man because i ain't done enough cbd i don't think well you gotta make sure you get like good cbd because like a lot, there's a lot of like fake cbd like the gas station shit like oh, that's really? like yeah that'd be like fake cbd you need to get like real because real cbd costs basically just as much sometimes even more than regular cannabis you know? really and now there's a whole movement of like uh, hemp bars opening up, like just CBD mm. shops where they have CBD weed. Like right. you can smoke it, but it won't get you high, but you'll feel relaxed, you know? You married, girlfriend, anything like that? Not single at the moment, just married to the game and the hustle. <laughs> married to the Instagram thoughts? Yeah, married to the Instagram thoughts. Shops, Does that the work? Thoughts. What, the thoughts? You got the thoughts swimming in your DMs? Like, it, I, I've heard women like a man in uniform. <laughs> they do love a man. I, I do get some very... Uh, Friendly DMs. Come sometimes. over and wear yeah. the cop uniform. Yeah, there's been some uh, funny DMs over the years, uh, but yeah, it's just been a really funny. Yeah. So you're acting like you don't partake. <laughs> no, I try to just keep it 100 and just keep it moving. <laughs> I'm focused on my career. Yeah, yeah, I'm not trying to get locked down in a relationship and stuff. You know, if I have something, it's it's casual. Yeah, you don't got to get locked yeah. down to get some Instagram ass, man. Yeah, no, absolutely not. In fact, if they try to bring that up, then that's definitely a sign that you should maybe take a step back. Yeah, but no, nah, but everyone thinks I always, like, smash the girls that I, like, work with and stuff, but that's really not the case. Like, I'd rather, like, have them be comfortable with me and be able mm-hmm. to do all the wild stuff we, that we do in the skits and be comfortable. You never had the, the situation go <laughs> past just working together where all of a sudden, like, you, you do a skit together and then all of a sudden... Yeah, that, happens the- here, that happens here and there, but, you know, for the most part, I try and keep it professional. Nice. Is there anybody uh, in the Instagram, like, mm-hmm. scene that you would want to work with that stands out to you as, like, you know, uh-huh. they would be great to get it in with? Uh, you mean like working just skits and stuff? Or yeah. The chicks or, or just uh, no, just anyone in general. In general anyone yeah. in general? Uh, definitely uh, Spice Adams. He's hilarious. You know Spice. He's I don't the, think so. He's the dude who used to be on the Bears and stuff. He does all these like basketball videos. He's really hilarious. Oh, Check okay. him out. Yeah. I He's supposed to do some stuff. Yeah. I feel like Brother Nature is one that's fucking exploded. You know what I'm talking about? The food oh, with Kev, all the animals. Oh, Kev, yeah, Kev, Kev. Yeah. yeah. Um, ooh. Yeah, he's he's like when I see his engagement on Twitter, I'm just like, holy fuck, bro! Yeah. He's taking this to a whole, totally different level. Nice, nice. Oh. Yeah, he has a niche. Like you know, the animal thing is good. Like look at him and Tarzan. Maybe you should try that. Maybe you should get a tiger. Yeah. Well, I'm supposed to do a skit for a brand this week, and I'm gonna have animals in it. You know, I'm doing this whole thing it's for a edible brand. Oh, really? So, yeah. So that's dope. Yeah. These brands ever catch feelings? Like you should be working <laughs> with one brand and not all of them. I mean. No, not really. I'm not taking everyone's business like that, too, you know? So, um, as long as, especially, obviously, I'm not going to do a skit right now for a, a, a pre roll brand, like, you know, nothing right. like, but if it's something that doesn't compete with what I'm doing, then I feel that it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I got a lot of clout to give out, you know? I got, you know, I got to share the clout. You guys got to give it give it to everyone. Oh, you you got to know your worth at a certain point <laughs> in terms of uh, just being able to, to even control your shit like when i started doing live streams people were you know i i didn't even realize that i was gonna have people start paying me to play their music mm-hmm. people all of a sudden start sending 10 bucks like play my song i'm like shit all right well i guess i gotta play it yeah. and then all of a sudden i'm like okay i gotta raise these rates you know yeah. this is like pure supply and demand yeah you need to constantly be raising your rates and it's hard because you're just, sometimes you're like wow like i can't believe i'm gonna get this much money for something that like i came up with in my head mm-hmm. like you know but it's the reality of it like you just gotta keep you gotta know your worth you know, you charge what you feel you're worth. Facts. That's definitely true. Um, is there anything else that we should uh, talk about? Uh, do, or do you have any hobbies? Anything you do in your in your life outside of uh, the Instagram stuff? Uh, honestly, like, my, my days are pretty much committed to just always making content and just, like, auditioning and doing those sorts of things. Like, just always keep my finger to the pulse of Instagram, looking for trends and stuff. That's a big mm. part of, like, making content that's viral is, like, hitting trends. Like, you have to kind of be able to read the tea leaves like you know all the time so right i'm always jumping on that but i like going to the movies i like hiking 
Uh, Hiking okay, yeah. or Central Park? I recently went to, uh, I died though. I went to the Hollywood sign. Like I did that long ass where it's super steep for like two miles or whatever. Really? Like, yeah, that, that thing killed me. Oh, you went up to the actual sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I've hiked in that whole area. I actually did a vlog yeah. that got three million views where I went there and did acid. But uh, <laughs> we didn't actually go to the sign. We were just like hunky, hiking the surrounding mountains. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's beautiful. I, I love, that's what I love about California. I really like, I, I don't really be missing New York because I moved out here six months ago. Mm. Like, California's just so beautiful and so it's warm, it's nice, you know? Right. But I gotta go back to New York in the uh, next week. So, what are you doing back there? Uh, I'm actually emceeing a good friend's wedding because I used to do, uh, I used to emcee weddings, bar mitzvah, sweet 16s for the first few years of my career. Uh -huh. So, like, they knew, so I promised them I would do it. But I didn't know I was going to be part of this cannabis brand like a year and a half later. So now it's like the worst possible time for me to be doing it because I have to go back to New York instead of being out here for 420. So Oh, right. Yeah. The 420 yeah. thing. I forgot about that. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to be at Coachella. I didn't get booked for anything. No, I had no one booked out in 22. I mean, people hit me up, but I'm going to be honest. It's, it's kind of like a thing where I make enough money through the YouTube thing that I'm not trying to do anything yeah. unless it's x amount of dollars and x amount of dollars is like yeah. most people aren't really trying to pay that unless it's yeah. you know because there's, there's a lot of like smaller people that they could go to and stuff you know people hit me up all the time trying to get me to go you know come host this show we'll give you three grand i'm like no yeah. no no i don't get yeah. on a plane for three grand yeah exactly you need to make sure it makes just what you want it's not even like me having my head up my ass it's just like at a certain point it's like well there's all these other things i could be doing and i'm gonna make a lot more money than that so yeah. and i just don't want it like a lot of times it's like people that seem a little sketchy not maybe a hundred percent trustworthy yeah because you know, yeah, honestly like i'm at a point now where i really do need to start building a team i just gotta get a little more of a bag and then i can start having like a publicist and like an assistant and stuff like that you don't have like a manager no, no as far as social media goes no i mean i have tv and film representation but they have they really like uh not as much involved in like the social like that's really my domain so to speak everything i've been doing because i just have a really good business acumen and know mm -hmm. how to just like build my brand and just do what i do yeah that is the weird part too is that i would love to get like a manager but it's like i never meet people that i'm like oh yeah you're the guy like you could yeah. govern my career better than i could it's, govern it's my hard own career because you, you have to give up control and like for me mm -hmm. I, I enjoy like i know no one's gonna go as hard for me as me like you know mm -hmm. so it's hard to put that trust in someone else like to find that perfect person yeah but hopefully it comes with time you know i'm i'm excited hopefully this uh business supreme green hopefully that will make me a wealthy guy as well so i don't need to worry about promo or any of that kind of stuff i think it's know? inevitable yeah 3x berry goo yeah triple triple berry goo i'm we have five different five this. different strains so yeah we're very excited to just uh kick it off you know and just get it all over there and just have it as a new movement definitely yeah um man i appreciate you coming on here anything Thank else we so should uh, shout out or talk no, about just uh you know everyone can follow me at jacob burger actor b-e-r-g-e-r -E it's actor. on the screen yeah oh it's on the screen. oh perfect yeah 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 and just go to, and check out supreme green with three underscores as well and uh yeah thanks so much for having me on the show i really i really appreciate it my brother appreciate all you right. man it was very interesting to uh, get into your head and see what goes on with this mysterious uh, character <laughs> that we all see on the internet so much absolutely thank you for having me appreciate you man all right no jumper coolest podcast on the world check us out on youtube soundcloud itunes no jumper.com cop some merch peace